Welcome back to CCTV. On today's menu, highlights of the social event and an interview on safe use of mixtures. But first we start with the Q&A on Korea and Taiwan. Uh, I have a question about uh, risk assessment uh, to the panel speakers, uh, include Korea and, uh, and also Taiwan. I want uh, yeah, somebody to clarify who is going to do the risk assessment. And uh, I remember in the past, uh, uh, both authority sides, they will uh, get the data from the industry, you know, from the, um, the chemical company, and the authority will go for the risk assessment and, and CSR work. But it seems like uh, from the speaker that uh, uh, the, the, the work kind of pushed back to the, uh, to the people who uh, are to the chemical manufacturer, and, and I want to un understand what's the situation now. I'll get some clarification who indeed need to go for the risk assessment the CSR, these things, for both Taiwan and Korea. Thank you. To give you a more precise answer, my assistant, Ms. Lee, is going to translate my Korean to English. On behalf of MOE, uh, Republic of Korea, uh, the risk assessment uh, should be conducted by businesses and undercarriage. And uh, once the businesses submit uh, risk data, to NIER and then NIER reviews that. In Taiwan, similar situation for the purpose of registration of new chemical substance and the existing. If your tonnage band exceed that threshold, of course, there's a registrant who is, uh, in the, which is uh, industry's responsibility to provide the full hazard assessment, exposure assessment, and risk assessment period. For, for the CSR, so you can use your uh, CESA uses or the standard tools, but you need to adapt them with the local and regional assessment factors. Time to check in on our local reporter. Annemarie, where are you today? I'm at the Zaanse Schanstiert. One of the locations our delegates could visit yesterday during our sightseeing tours. The Zaanse Schans, showing the Netherlands of the 18th and 19th century, is Western Europe's eldest industrial area. Nowadays, several industrial buildings from that time are still active, like this windmill. It's a color mill that creates pigments for the traditional paint production. When you enter the windmill, you directly see the millstones, which are used to grind chalk. The stones are of granite and each weighs three tons. The chalk is used, among others, to paint the white lines on soccer pitches. Some visitors tried to taste the chalk. They thought it was cornflour. A second pair of stones is located in a closed-off milling chamber. It's used for earth pigments that you can use to make your own paint, but also seeds, roots and tropical woods are ground here from time to time to create pigments. For many centuries, already these products are used to dye textiles. When the mill's running, it shakes and quivers. You can hear the thunder of the millstones. The windmill goes into operation when the wind blows at 4 by 4. All the equipment can be used at once when the wind increases to force 5 or 6. Interesting to see how pigment for paint was already made centuries ago. Which brings me to our interview of today. I talked with Janice Robinson from CEPI, the European Council of the Paint, Printing Inc. and Art Scholars Industry and Leo van der Biese of Royal Haskoning DHV on the safe use of mixtures. Janice, how can formulators produce relevant sumis for mixtures uh, when they do not have the full composition uh, available? Uh, because sometimes uh, there's no composition available or sometimes they're using substances for which there is no read registration or chemical safety assessment available. Well, sumis will typically be provided by downstream user sector associations mm -hmm. ready for formulators to use as soon as they have a mixture with uh, a registered substance, so there's an obligation to communicate something down the supply chain. And the beauty of this approach is that you can still apply it if you don't have all of the exposure scenario information. As long as the information in the SUMI you want to use is consistent with the risk management measures and the hazards of the other substances, that the SUMI will still 
be fine in practice. Leo, do you foresee a link between Kizar and Sweats and Sumis? Uh, for Sweats, there will be a direct link because it describes the operational conditions and risk management on, under which a substance is being used, and that can be placed into Kizar, either manually or through an import. Uh, for the Sumis, of course, much less because Kizar is a tool under reach, and reach is substance related and not mixture related. Please watch the complete interview on our website and YouTube channel. Let's return to our local reporter and find out more about yesterday's social event. Anne-Marie, did you have a good time last night? Yes, it was very nice. Here's a short impression of the social event. ChemCon Europe 2016 social event was held at the DAF, the DAF, currently located on Amsterdam's monumental canals. The DAF is named after a 17th century clandestine church. At that time, secrecy was a matter of necessity for non-Calvinist churches. Not completely legal or illegal, but tolerated. Tolerance is a custom still widely practiced in Amsterdam and the rest of our country. The current Baroque building from 1857 is still called the DAF, a symbol of peace. Therefore, an excellent location for a peaceful evening. Thank you for your lovely report. And now for something completely different, Tosca Reform, a topic I will discuss with Carl Enters from ERM. Carl is uh, ERM's global sustainability leader. Welcome, Carl. Thank you, Tier. I'm really excited to be here, excited to be uh, sharing a little bit about what's going on with Tosca. Uh, credible regulation in the U.S. needs to be changed, time for it, and uh, good, good to communicate about it. Could you tell us a little bit where Tosca is heading? Well, what I can tell you is that Congress is working really, really hard um, to rationalize the two bills which have already been passed in the House and Senate. Um, there's a real sense that uh, it's now or never, election coming, and you know if this drags on, um, it will just get swept away in a new administration and we'll have to start all over. So industry is working hard um, in combination with our government to, to see if we can get this done. I'm beginning to think there's real hope that this could happen in 2016. And if it passes, what should industry do? Well, I think uh, if this passes in 2016, I think industry would need to immediately start evaluating um, their product lines through their value chain. Um, that in fact, Tosca is all about um, you know, moving uh, risk management and assessment downstream into end uses and articles in places that have not been assessed previously uh, for the last 40 years. And your statement is? If Tosca passes in 2016, my company should take action. <laughs> okay. Also share with us what you think about this. I'm sure we'll learn more about Tosca reform at Chemcon the Americas 2016 in Toronto. Carl, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, dear. I'm wearing my purple tie. So guess what? This morning we focus on the implementation of the Purple Book, the global harmonized system. We will also look into country-specific legislation in Middle and South America, as well as specific legislation for South Africa. Furthermore, poison center notifications and the topic on transport and customs. And in the afternoon, we focus on supply chain communication before we put our spotlights on Canada and the United States. Thank you for watching and have a great day.